Welcome, adventurers. Today I made these out of this. They are a uh, broken terrain, sci-fi terrain module things. And uh, I'd never put anything together before that was specifically for tabletop wargaming or, or anything like that. And uh, I wanted to give it a shot. And these uh, are very reasonably priced. I think it was like 40 bucks or so for the both of them. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of interesting detail. They look really cool. I mean, theoretically, you could use these without even painting them. Just slapping them together. Uh, it's all laser, laser cut MDF. It's 5 mil or half a centimeter. Uh, as you can see, some of them aren't fully attached which can be problematic because each one of these sheets is got a letter number combination to tell you what the parts are and where you need to put them together. So initially it can be a puzzle piece, especially with the lighter colored one, the larger one. Much of that one was disconnected and torn apart when I pulled it out. And see here right in the bottom right hand corner if you can read the uh, what it says you know there's an, a, a letter it's like one of four two of four three of four like there three of four and then all the pieces have alphanumeric uh, indicators on the instructions and I do my best to trim them out so I don't break anything uh, which was very easy to do with the dark colored material this darker MDF I was very very sturdy I uh, couldn't break it I mean not that I tried uh, that being said, with the lighter colored stuff, when I was just pushing it together, as I did with this one after putting it together first, I found that some areas kind of separated, delaminated, or broke. And here is the walls for this one assembled, and they just slot right into laser cut holes. Then all the little detail pieces, which are the doors, took me a minute to realize the door actually mounts to the outside, not the other way around, and I put the panel in backwards. Fortunately, this is a dry fit. Nothing was glued yet. And once I figured out my mistake, I fixed it. Slapped all these together. I'm trying to figure out what this piece was. Oh, it's a window, which I'm not understanding the windows fully. Um, it seems like they're made to be removable and applied from the inside out, but they also look neat from the outside in if you want extra detail on the outside. And this is the air conditioning, like air handling unit that goes on the roof. And that's pretty much that one assembled. This one, as you can see, looks real nice. It's bright. It's easy to see all the lines of details. However, that wasn't attached. Not that it's that big a deal. It's just the two roof pieces, so wasn't missing a lot. This one, uh, it was basically a jigsaw puzzle. I had to put most of the pieces back together. These little corner tabs weren't even in. They were floating around in the bag. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a bit of a challenge, finding all the pieces and putting them back together. As you can see there, that one was fully broken apart in like four or five pieces. Uh, none of the actual pieces that I needed were broken, so I could still put it together. But here is an example of when I was putting the door together, uh, this, the, both ends just snapped off, even though I was pressing on the middle, which I thought was interesting, uh, right above the holes. So, do keep that in mind that these can be brittle. I don't know if it's the difference in material or what, but I found that the darker walnut brown material went together so much nicer and tend to have uh, fewer issues, whereas the lighter colored material did tend to have some issues with like the corner pieces delaminating or, or f fraying as I was putting it together. And uh, yeah. Pretty straightforward, really. Uh, it probably took me an hour or so to put both of them together. Um, and, of course, nothing is glued at this stage. Uh, but I did notice that the inside walls are very, very blank. And that's obviously not great. And, of course, if you can hear any sounds in the background, I do have a dog. And uh, we were just playing. And I thought he was done. And he apparently may not be. So, uh... Maybe I'll throw in a picture of Guinness here somewhere so you can see that. That's my name of my dog, Guinness. Because when I got him, he looked like a half pint of Guinness, and now he's decidedly much larger. 
So since the walls are all so blank on the inside, which is the back side of the material when it's laser cut, obviously these are primarily designed to be seen from the outside, obviously, but you made a playable interior, broken terrain. Maybe, I don't know, laser cut some little detail pieces of the glue inside. And if you uh, like what you're seeing, like, share, subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to offer some more support, I have a Patreon. Links in the descriptions. Description. This is just a sprue on the top left there of, you know, those cheap plastic cabinets that we had some of these laying around at work. Uh, little syringe vials. Uh, cut up the sprues to kind of look like pipes, hair ties, and test tube caps for wire conduit housing. Some off-cut failed 3D print stuff from a previous video. And maybe I'll link that here uh, for wall detail. Glued together. And I sprayed it all with a satin, satin granite Rust-Oleum. All right. My favorite part when everything is just one uniform color because now it doesn't look like I've glued a bunch of trash plastic to the inside of a, you know, nicely made laser cut kit. Adds detail and interest to it. So the doors, as you can see, not attached. Obviously, I didn't want to attach them when I was spray painting it because then I get glued in one position or another. But also, there's no materials to make the hinges. Fortunately, I've got a box of like a thousand toothpicks. And so, slot that in there using angle cutters or side cutters. Cut it off clean right at the hole. Boom, like that. And I use the tip of the angle cutters ultimately to push it in the seat a little deeper. I do the same thing on the lower part of the hinge. Of course, I have to cut it shorter to actually fit down there. But I wiggle it in the little hole, making sure that it seats fully, press down, and then, like that, snip it off clean. And a little drop of super glue on the top of both of those, and they stayed in there just fine. Nip the tips off so you don't have weird pointy bits, unless you like weird pointy bits. Now for some detail. Since this has so much good detail already cut into it, shallowly cut with the laser, I decided to try my hand at more detail painting. I am not an expert painter. I do my best. I'm also doing most of it with cheap craft paint, as you can see. And here's where I realized, wait, granite gray, the spray paint's granite gray. That's, that's weird. These are decidedly different colors. And they, they really are. It's, inc it's almost white by comparison, but it's a granite gray. Uh, paint the pipes with this reddish color, like this, make them stand out. Blue for the upside down test tube deals, maybe they're like water tanks or something. Uh, black for some edges and the cables inside. And silver for the air handling unit and a couple of detail pieces on the roofs. That brush came at that angle, by the way, I specifically used it because it allowed me to be out of my own way when I was trying to paint details. So the brush head being offset is super handy. Gold, and now a bronzy color, and then a black oil wash. I wanted these to not be rusted, chipped, painted stuff. I wanted them to look pretty good, as well as uh, somewhat used. This is uh, one part oil paint, and I think three parts mineral spirits. But you put it on and wipe off the excess so that it goes into the panel lines, which is where the term panel lining comes from. But see how it brings out all the details. Now I'd like to thank my patrons. Of course, it's HM Girl Potpourri and LAJ still. And of course, you could be part of that list. All you got to do is follow the link in the uh, episode description. Now for the glamour shots. I think they turned out really cool looking. All in all, I could put it together very fast, much faster than I could craft anything, which is definite appeal. The downside is, is I want things to have a detailed paint job and look neat, which is tedious and time consuming. If I'm going to make something nice and neat and clean, then I want to paint it nice and neat and clean. And boy, howdy, that takes some time. And uh, I definitely spent probably 10 or so, maybe 12 hours painting this from start to finish. Whereas I spent less than an hour putting it all together, including the gluing. And since I used super glue, it dried super quick. Uh, it is recommended to use wood glue, by the way. 
wood glue will definitely seep into the pores and hold it better. Um, because I have a very full-time job, I try to make sure that I uh, can get things done in a reasonable amount of time. So obviously I use the most expedient glue that I have available to me at any given point. The insides, plenty of room for your miniatures to hang out. Whether it's tabletop role-playing or wargaming, there's a surprising amount of room uh, in this little kind of J, G shaped, I don't know. This weird angular one, I put a couple of really large models in that front right corner and they fit very well. And of course this one is like, it's twice the size almost. It could hold a ton of models inside. The roof and floor hatches are both removable, uh, as, as are all the window panels. And of course, you can open up the doors, close the doors. As I understand it with Necromenda and other games, if you've got doors, they can either start the game in a closed, sealed, locked position or start the game in an unlocked, open position. So you've got that option here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm impressed uh, overall. I would like to see some detail pieces that can be glued into the blank flat sections of the interiors of these. I'd love to see that. So if you're you're listening, Broken Terrain, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Uh, as you can see, there are two very large models in what would be a confined space. Uh, obviously, pieces from my previous build, they fit right on top because they're following the same 3x3 three three model as anybody else does, apparently, with inches, that is, 3x3 three three inches. And of course, the overall. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed today's video. And I want you to go have an adventure in crafting. <laughs>